Hey everyone, Cody Hayes here, and I'd like to welcome you to part three as we look at forming ethics and logic along with some common logical or rhetorical fallacies that are found within ethics. And this is where we left off. We left off with, you know, the straw man fallacy, which essentially does not respond to the intended question or statement being made. And then the either or fallacy, you know, declaring that either something must be this or it must be that. There can't be anything in between. There can't be any type of gray area. And sometimes that's not a fallacy because at times, you know, there are situations where either something is this or it is that. Like, for example, a woman declaring herself to be a little bit pregnant. Well, there's no such thing. Either she is or she is not. There cannot be an in-between there. Another particular logical fallacy, the appeal to authority. And a description of that is, this person said it, therefore it must be true. I myself was accused of making this particular fallacy. Um, in a video that I made for my introduction to the New Testament course, where I discuss the historical Jesus, I had somebody respond back to that video who was um, not a student in the class, but somebody from Holland. And essentially, this person said to me that I didn't provide enough evidence that showed that Jesus existed. And of course, I'm thinking, well, yeah, actually I did. I provided this. And then I said, well, what kind of evidence do you want? And the person basically said, you know, something materialist, which, from a very empirical point of view, is impossible, um, as we, you know, at this moment cannot, you know, recreate or represent the past in a very little literal form. We can only reconstruct it. But at some point in this conversation, you know, I said to said person, you know, I have a master's degree in religious studies. What kind of, you know, what kind of degree do you have? And the person told me that he had taken some courses in psychology at some school of higher education. He didn't say where, but he accused me of making the whole appeal to authority. Well, here's the thing with that. It's not that if I say something that automatically makes it true, but when an individual has a certain degree in a particular field, that means that his or her point of view is going to carry more weight than a person that does not have said degree in said field. That's one of the reasons why lawyers during a trial case always tries to get someone with the highest degree to argue in favor of their case on a particular point and the other side challenges them because it's not because they said it that it automatically makes it true but their point of view is going to carry more weight than someone you know with said degree in the case of the one individual I was talking about that said he had taken some psychology courses he never said, though, he earned a degree, but assuming that he did, if I was to ask him questions in psychology, I wouldn't, you know, take the point of view, oh, because this person says it and he has a degree, it must be true. No. But his, his point of view on the particular question would carry more weight than someone without a degree. Doesn't mean that it's automatically true, it's just that it carries more weight. Begging the question. Essentially a form of circular logic where you don't move forward, you just argue in a circle. So for example, the statement I have here, to show that God is real, I'm going to use his existence.
where I think a lot of begging the question particularly comes from Rene Descartes. Rene Descartes is considered the father of modern Western philosophy, but he is also known slash accused of using what is called the Descartian circle, and it's referenced to the idea of begging the question that essentially a major point of his argument is that he is doing nothing more but arguing in circles. Um, in one of his epistemology arguments, epistemology is the notion of how we gain and or receive knowledge. Descartes makes the conclusion how we view the world properly if God exists and if he is not a deceiver. And since God does exist and he is not a deceiver, we therefore view the world properly. Well, where that becomes circular logic, begging the question, is that since God exists and since he's not a deceiver, why was there questions being raised about his existence and if he was a deceiver? Or, like the statement I have on the screen, to show that God is real, I'm going to use his existence. Well, if he exists, what is there to show? Nothing. It's just begging the question. It's just arguing in circles. Another fallacy, ad baculum. A form of terrorism or using threats or force to accomplish a goal. And let me have a quick sip of water and I'll give a little better example perhaps of ad baculum. The word itself literally means um, at the stick, but it's the notion of essentially using fear to accomplish a goal, which terrorism, that word itself is using, you know, force or fear to accomplish a goal. But, for example, if I was in charge of a company and I'm presenting this idea in front of all my employees. And I tell my employees after I show my idea, to any one of you that disagrees with my idea, I want you to leave this room right now, go to the secretary, and collect your last paycheck. Essentially, I'm basically telling everybody, if you don't agree with my idea, I'm going to fire you. Well, that's a form of ad baculum. That's a form of using fear to accomplish a goal. In order to get my idea over, I'm basically going to scare you into saying that if you disagree with me, I'm going to fire you. Another one, ad miseri cordium. Well, essentially, it's attempting to provoke emotions of pity or sympathy. You know, for example, the statement, I couldn't take the test today because my grandmother is in the hospital. Now, the thing with, you know, ad miseri cordium, and I think the, you know, example that I gave, you know, kind of explains it pretty well, you know, attempting to provoke emotions of pity or sympathy. I mean, there are situations where people do have legitimate cases involving, you know, pity or sympathy, and they need to be taken seriously. But where it really falls into the fallacy is when you try to use this as a means to an end, to get out of doing something. You know, in this case, it'd be using your grandmother as a means to an end. And where that can become a problem is that if it's ever shown that you used your grandmother as a means to an end, um, you might not get the trust of others. Another fallacy, cherry picking.
essentially observing or citing what is good and ignoring what is bad. I think, again, that's pretty self-explanatory, but it's like the notion of saying, okay, here's a document, and there's all kinds of different things in this document. Here are some things that are pretty good. People are going to like this. But here are some things that are pretty bad. People probably don't want to hear this. So let's just show them the good and ignore what is bad. Well, that's an example of cherry picking, that, you know, you need to show all of it. And, you know, the good and the bad, and let people, you know, see the example for itself. One final particular fallacy, the argument from special pleading. Well, essentially, the description I have here is that holding that individuals or worlds are to abide by certain rules by, while making oneself or one's world exempt from the same criteria without providing any justification. Now, the thing with the argument for special pleading is that there are certain things that happen that any individual would refer to as extraordinary and would perhaps go against, you know, the rules or how the world is supposed to work. But the problem really is when these particular situations come up all the time and no justification is given and that's when individuals okay start to wonder wait a minute you know this is how it's you know the world functions you know i can understand an extraordinary case happening here and maybe perhaps no justification is given. It's a one-time thing. But now, you know, you've got another one here and another one here, another one here. No, oh no, that's, that's going in the argument from special pleading. That type of thing. Well, that's essentially all that we have uh, for this lecture. So, if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to send me a message in the Q&A forum or send me an email. Till then, take care.